Getty is part of a larger community, which is the city of Los Angeles. The physical design, it seems to me, needs to relate to the grid of the city, the form of the city, the structure of the city, which has to do with the street pattern, the highway pattern, and the topography. One of the strongest elements in this location and throughout Los Angeles, of course, is the freeway. And as I spent time uh, on the site, I realized we have the San Diego freeway, this powerful element running north-south. And th there was a, a, a ridge which paralleled the freeway and another one which paralleled the freeway to the north. And these vectors uh, of topography, as well as a third ridge, more or less uh, went out in this direction, paralleling this one. These vectors, it seemed to me, of natural form of the Earth were the beginning of, of thinking about the site and the buildings, that somehow the buildings should rise out of the ridges that were there. And so the museum sector took its location here on the ridge on the city side the downtown side, the UCLA side, the freeway side, and the, the uh, library, the Center for the History of Art, took its vector, as it were, from the ridge on the private side. And it's like two arms reaching out, creating a, a space in between them. And it seemed to me that in between these two major portions of the Getty Center should be a garden, a garden that belonged to the museum, a garden that belongs to the Center for the History of Art. And it seemed quite logical that the places which belong both to the museum as well as to the center, meaning the restaurant, the cafeteria, the place of coming together and sort of uh, eating, would be at the head of the central garden. And so that seemed, to, in a sense, to grow out of the earth, out of the topography, out of the place, and also be related to the city of Los Angeles. After five years of planning in 1987, crews broke ground for the new J. Paul Getty Center on a mountaintop between the Los Angeles neighborhoods of Bel Air, Brentwood, and Pacific Palisades. The building process was harder than anyone had imagined. A construction worker explains why. It's been the most extremely difficult job that any of us have ever encountered. One road up and one road down. 300,000 blocks of travertine and 40,000 aluminum panels had to go up that road. I don't think anybody understood the complexity of building on top of a mountain. I don't think the architects knew, the owners didn't know, the contractor, the subcontractors, nobody knew. It's like constructing a building on top of a pinhead. For almost a dozen years, the city's residents watched and waited for the center's completion. Angelinos describe how they felt as they watched the center being built. Oh, it's been great. I drive up and down the 405 to work every day, and I watch them take the mountaintop down load after load. And I saw the tram line go up, and the buildings get bigger every day. Well, a good part of my life was spent watching the Getty get built, so I'm really looking forward to seeing it from the inside. We're so used to seeing buildings go up overnight, but I've been driving by this for years, and they're still building. This feels really permanent, like the mountain itself did. They went to a lot of trouble to show the world some art. This shows that LA has some culture. We have something to show people besides amusement parks and beaches. The center opened to the public in December 1997. Chief Operating Officer and Building Project Manager Stephen Roundtree. Building cultural buildings, particularly building art museums, is really tough because there's just nowhere where you can compromise. The insides are just as important as the outsides, and I think we've created a place where people in their own ways find inspiration and energy out of the experience. 